we are living the test that I was speaking about. Collect as many crystals as you can, you will get to Jannah. Don't worry about how much the other man has collected. You collect them. Every opportunity, do good. Reach out to people. Be the best you can. Fulfill both rights. The right of Allah and the right of the creatures of the same Allah. And that brings me to a very interesting point. Everything you see around you was created by Allah. He who created you. It belongs to Him. The earth belongs to Him. The heavens belong to Him, not to you. You belong to Him. Subhanallah. So whatever you see, tell yourself, Allah is testing me. How is my relation with all these things? The road that you are driving on, honor it, respect it. You know what the hadith says? Ittaqul Qila wa man la'anani ya Rasool Allah Qal Alladhi yatakhalla fi tariq al-nasi Aw fi dhillihim The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says Be careful of the two who are cursed So the Sahaba asked And what are these two Or who are the two who will be cursed What are the two things that Would be making people become cursed Or who are the two cursed people He says the one Listen carefully the one who relieves himself on the path of the people or in the shade where the people achieve shade from. How come? Because you are harming the other creatures of Allah. You are harming the other creatures of Allah. Imagine people urinate under a tree and they think it's okay. Someone wants to come and have a picnic, mashallah, romantic moment. They lay down their little carpet, mashallah. I hope you do it, guys. Inshallah. And suddenly you say, oh, it's smelling here. What's going on? Automatically, the one who made it smell was wrong he should have chosen a better place look at the cats look at the dogs when they want to relieve themselves a lot of the times they will choose the place they will dig a little hole they will make sure that they have covered it in most cases those are dogs and cats what about us shouldn't we be better than that if the hadith goes as far as looking after the places where people might benefit from the shade who are we to harm people physically when Allah says you're not allowed to harm them with the smell? Look at the hadith where the Prophet ﷺ speaks about those who remove a harmful object from the path of the people have shown that they are true believers in Allah because it is a part of belief. Imatatul adha an tariq min al iman. Part of your iman is to remove a harmful object. When you are driving, when you are walking, you see a rock in the on the road, you swerved and you missed it, mashallah. What should you do if you are a true believer? If you really have iman, you should think for a moment, let me collect my crystal. How do I do it? I park my car, make sure the traffic is in order. I don't want anyone to bump me, but I will pick up this rock only and solely for the sake of Allah. That is your crystal. I picked it up and I threw it away on the side in such a way that whoever passes this road, my friend, my, not my friend, Muslim, not Muslim, whoever they are, they will not be harmed by that rock. I'm sure you've heard that this is part of Iman. Have you heard about it? Look, we are nodding our heads. Yes, we have. Now, why don't we think that the same Allah who is telling us that part of your Iman is to remove a rock from the road so that others are not harmed by it, do you think that that Allah would tell you to harm other people physically and say you are a good Muslim? That's what people are doing. In the name of Islam, they are killing. In the name of Islam, they are destroying. Who? Other Muslims. People who might differ with you in sect. People who might differ with you in faith. 